Uh, let me introduce the officials seated here on the stage. From the center, the new president of the executive council, Mr. Michael Snow, assistant commissioner of the Canada Revenue Agency. Also at the table are Mrs. Marta Gonzalez Ayala, Under Secretary of Taxation, Fairway, and former President of SEAC. This is Yamile Perez, Chief of the National Office of Cuba. Mr. Theodore Setzer, Assistant Deputy Commissioner of International of the Internal Revenue Service of the United States of America. Also at the table is Mr. Stefano Giswelli, head of the Italian permanent delegation to SEAT. This is Allison Raphael, tax commissioner of Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Mario Cazon, executive president of National Tax Service of Bolivia. Mr. Yagaro Martins, undersecretary of audit, federal revenue secretary of Brazil. This is Maribel Zuniga, Director, Tax Relations, Tax General Director of Costa Rica, and Mr. Marcio Ferreira Berti, SEAT Executive Secretary. Now I would like to welcome Mr. Socorro Velasquez, Director, Planning and Institutional Development of the SEAC Executive Secretariat, to join me, and he will provide a recap of this week's events at the General Assembly. Let's give a hand for Socorro. Spoken yet, so you might have saved those slots a little later. But just the same, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I, I can say one thing before I start. I, I am admired by the MC. He's done an excellent job and uh, he's kept us on time, on track. Um, and when you're six foot eight, it's sort of a few laps. It happens. Thank you very much. I, I want to say that we're coming to the close of three exciting days here as we speak about the world-class tax administration and its relationship with key stakeholders. And uh, did we provide all the answers this week? I doubt it. Uh, but one thing is for certain, I think that I'm a bit uh, more informed today than I was when I walked in Tuesday morning. It's provided a wealth of information that and you can see the dynamics, you can see the questions, you can see the comments, and it doesn't happen at every meeting, but it certainly happens here. Um, while the main focus of the assembly was the relationship to, that we fostered with entities, one tune kept coming into my head, and that was uh, first look at ourselves, examine ourselves as an organization. Uh, are we a world tax organization? And then are we ready to make those changes that world tax organizations made. Am I ready to deal with partners and stakeholders to better serve my mission? And one thought came to mind, and it was mentioned by, by uh, Commissioner Hamilton, uh, sort of the first day. And uh, his comment was the day that we think that we are perfect, that we've reached perfection, is the first day of trouble because the dynamics keep on changing. There are so many challenges. Change is constant and change is good. And while we may say we've reached a world-class tax organization, at 410, at 415 it may not be. It's something that will change almost every day. And how do we face those challenges every day? Another note that came to mind is that we seem to have common problems, problem challenges, uh, common concerns, 
And the lack of human resources came up once, twice, three, or even just a few minutes ago, we spoke about human resources. Basically, we're all getting older and we're not replenishing our staff. We saw that in the example of, of, of Japan, but Japan was not the only one. Other tax administrations spoke about their aging staff lacking current skills and unreplaceable because there's no funds. Um, I've been around for a while, as you can see, and good friend Bill Baker here has also been around for a while, so we, we see certain personalities like Horacio that we know, and and, uh, and one thing is almost constant. The, the parliaments always think that you don't collect enough, you're overstaffed, and somebody could do it much better than you, and that would be eternal. So I, I don't think that we should continue crying and being concerned about that because it's not going to change. What possibly needs to change is our attitude regarding fall. If I'm in this hole, how do I get out of it? How do I improve? How do I become a world-class tax organization? And speakers address all those issues, and we got pretty good examples, and we got pretty good ideas of how we can move on to be that world-class tax organization. We heard about issues about how we can partner with institutions, and the JITSI model was, was excellent because it deals with concrete taxpayer issues on compliance and whatever schemes are being developed and how do we address that as a body. Uh, I got to say that also with, with MTO and the idea that, you know, we, we can benefit from each other's skills, we can benefit from each other's experiences, each other's bodies, let's pull those resources. Why? Because we're not going to get any more. So we need to start thinking how we can smarter. We said, and the issue will be always that you won't have enough staff. So and we heard that from the US IRS when, when Paul was talking about our resources are depleting. Uh, we are not getting, they're not being replenished. So we need to start thinking how do we do business differently? And technology is part of the answer. I don't think it's the final answer, but it certainly is part of the answer. And the trouble is that there are so many skill sets that need to be developed that we face today that we possibly didn't face five years ago. Some of the uh, some of the ideas were some rather uh, somewhat rather novel and uh, for example when 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 friends speak from friends mentioned about how through that application on the internet one can pay not only taxes but other government related bills. Well I, I found that extremely interesting. Interesting and I sort of like the idea. The, um, my thought is, you know, not many tax administrations are in a position to do that. Be it for legal issues, to be it for their technology or how they're set up as, as, as a tax administration. I, I thought that's pretty novel. I think that's something I would want to do if I was in, in a position to be able to do that. The, uh, the, uh, the, one of the things I possibly bring back from this meeting is I, I sort of dread the day where technology is so well perfected that we could have this meeting via video conference. Uh, I hope the day never comes because you lose the opportunity that we all experienced. Uh, right before we all got called back into this room, I was speaking with a young lady from St. Lucia and from our counterpart from Chile regarding pre-filed income tax returns, personal income tax returns. I don't think we would have had that conversation over video conference or over any other source that was not being physically present here and maximizing the opportunity. That's really not a, a propaganda for you to continue attending our readings, but it helps and it helps all the members and it helps those that are related with the organization. Um, and I and I think that that you know don't don't get me wrong, it's not that I have any issues against technology. I think technology is good. It's, it's the world we're working in. Uh, and I think it's here to help us. And one one thing that came up with technology was in the round table that uh, uh, Santiago Diaz was uh, heading yesterday and on the informal economy and how more complex it could get with uh, the digital economy. 
Uh, and one of the questions he made was, particularly to, to uh, the tax director, uh, General Menendez, Menendez, the claim was, well, will it be more difficult now that we don't have paper trails and we don't have the ability to look at where taxpayers are not paying, not filing? And he said, uh, it won't be more difficult. He said, because there is a trail. It's on the internet. It's on the computer. The thing is, you need to find it. <coughs> and it's like looking for the proverbial needle in a haystack, but it's there. And those are the issues that concern a lot of people. Well, how do I develop the skills to be able to, to find that needle in a haystack? It's no longer concerned for paper, it's concerned for data, but it's in a different format. Um, this morning, I was looking at, what, at Facebook, <clears throat> like we all do, and WhatsApp, like we all do. And uh, there was something posted by, by my granddaughter, who works in uh, human resources at the Boeing company in Northern Virginia. Uh, the chat was to all family and friends. Boeing is hiring uh, a few dozen uh, employees for its uh, Northern Virginia uh, plan. And uh, they want individuals with computer skills, programming, engineering, and all those things that <clears throat> are neat, are necessary today. Uh, and if you remember the movie, The, the, the Graduate, in 1967, and, and uh, it was uh, Dustin Hoffman, when he's addressing the issue about being, being afraid and concerned for his future, and Mr. McCormick gave him the answer, it's, you know, plastic. Plastic is the future. That might have been true in 1967. My question is, what is it today? It's definitely technology. It's definitely people who can look at data analysis. It's definitely people who can develop excellent artificial intelligence programs to support the tax industry. So, you know, times are changing. Plastic may not be all that popular anymore. The, uh, the, uh, one of the things, too, that, that we heard the first and second day was <clears throat> what will that revenue agent of the future look like? And in the sense was, how will that revenue agent fit into my organization? And there were several skill sets that were required. Um, and we spoke about that we need to be a much more benevolent organization. We need to reach out to our taxpayers. And I sort of daydreamed a little bit while that was being said, and then I thought, why not be, what will be the, what will be the revenue agent of the future? And I said, it could be a robot, you know, fly down the street here, up to the taxpayer's commission here. Or taxpayers don't knock, knock, but it's not knocking. It's hello. I'm from the IRS. Right? Help me, right? I'm here to help you. So, you know, I don't know people would be willing to think that. Uh, but nevertheless, it's, it's, it's a fact of life that we do need to reach out to the taxpayer community. Um, I think that we've made major, major strides. Uh, I joined the IRS back in 1975, and I have to tell you, I, I don't think there was a lot of lost love between the taxpayer organizations and, and, and the taxpayers. You know, like, it was a us against them mentality. I, I honestly say, will say that I feel today we've made quantum leaps to understand our differences, to understand our behavior, and cooperating with each other. And I, and I say, are we there yet? It goes back to Mr. Hamilton's comments. The day you think you are, you're in trouble. You always have to keep on striving to improve that relationship. Very often I think of the tax administrations as a business. You've got assets, you've got human resources, and you've got a product. I realize not everybody wants to buy your product, there's taxes, but nevertheless, in, in your mind, you possibly need to think that this is a business. I've got a limited budget, I've got limited resources, I've got a mission, and I've got targets to, to really deliver on and goals. And if that is true, that we are a company, and we need to operate like a business, then customer service is important. United Airlines, I'm sure, lost a lot of 
suppliers when they started dragging people off planes by force. Um, and I think in our case, if we want to improve our members, our, our customer satisfaction levels, we need to see and we need to do things that will enhance that, that friendship, that, that confidence. And we've heard throughout the week of many efforts that are being made towards that goal. Uh, customer service, here again, we looked, we spoke about chat box. Uh, one thing that sort of hurts everybody is, and I don't think we do it much more, we don't really look at that, at that resource much today, it is calling your tax office. Um, that's always a challenge. That's always a challenge because uh, your call will be answered in the order it was received. Uh, a representative will take your call in approximately eight days. And uh, then we look at customer service. Somehow we lost that customer. Well, you don't lose them, you still have to buy them. You know? That's the only good thing about this business. Okay? It can't go other places to buy our product. But the point is, that you did improve compliance, you made compliance worse. The problem is that that individual is going to say, the heck is there? I'm not going to file, you know, let them find me. And uh, why? Because he's possibly looking for, for a quick answer to say, how do I complete section C of this form? But there's no service because there's nobody answering the call. So when you look at, at the taxpayer service we provide or don't provide, it's part of that model. And Chile made a comment that when they do their risk management model, they consider taxpayer service. So it's, it's here again, it's something I really didn't dwell a lot upon, but when you stop and think and you say, well, non-service of the taxpayer could result in higher non-compliance. And the bottom answer is yes. The bottom uh, the answer is that it could work towards that, that possibility. The, uh, Issue on human resources, here again, came up pretty often. And um, and it sort of plays into the whole set of where we are today as a tax administration. How important is human resources? And when uh, Leandro from Argentina said, I want people with attitude over aptitude. And I, I think I can, I can like that. Uh, and I recall that when many of us started in government as civil servants, uh, there was a lot of dedication <laughs> to being a civil servant. However, that was a different generation. That possibly were baby boomers. We deal with millennials today. And two of my grandkids are in their 20s and they are in the labor market and the labor force. And their ideals are very much different and mine were back in the 70s. The thing is, how do we incorporate those resources into our tax administration? Those officials, which will be the one executing the collection of taxes, the audits, and things of that nature. But it, it's a different generation. And I think possibly we need to start thinking in the mindset of that different generation. I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm not saying it's right, I'm saying it's different. And I'm sure their grandchildren are going to be way different. And what they are today. <clears throat> I um, I think I think I, I want to take away with me several things from this meeting, and uh, one of the uh, one of the issues I think that will stay with me is how do we get better, and how do I stop feeling that if I reach a, a dynamite, a excellent world-class tax organization level, I am going to stay there. And uh, how do I feel that all issues on compliance have been met? And I, I well, we had a conversation out in the, uh, out in the hall during coffee break, and someone said that, uh, well, you know, uh, there possibly is a way to get total compliance, 100% compliance, taxpayer compliance. And uh, they said, uh, yeah, you know, if you, if you go back to Brave New World and look at that totalitarian, <clears throat> totalitarian government, chances are that you would get complete compliance. Uh, I don't think that's the world we want to live in. Uh, 
Uh, but it's not the world. We want to live in a world which is much more realistic with, with a social conscience for all. And uh, <clears throat> that being <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. that being said, conferences such as these provide us a wealth of opportunity to look how the other is doing business. What did it wake up in my mind regarding what could I take home? What ideas are new? What ideas are novel? What ideas will help me improve revenue collection, deal with the shortages of human resources, deal with the issues of the new skills which keep on changing? And if I can't hire people to fill particular niches, how do I contract? And I think that's something that most of us already do as tax organizations. We simply contract particular skills for large, complex tax orders. And uh, there's always a sense of confidentiality, and there are confidentiality agreements, but there are some things that we simply can't train individuals for. And this is more common today as we deal with, with these accounting systems completely on a, on, a, on a mainframe and completely in other formats that we're not too accustomed to. So, the thing about <clears throat> preparing staff is simply looking at what skill sets are necessary. And if I can't have them on a 100% time basis, then you know, do I contract out? Are there for outsourcing certain things that we need to do? Um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the subject about taxpayer service. There, there are so many creative ways to be able to provide this taxpayer service. Uh, yeah, uh, it is it is it's just is being available if you become available. Um the issue about dealing with, with, with stakeholders, external stakeholders, I, I was impressed by by what Chen from Iowa was saying about all the outreach efforts they do with practitioners, all the all all the information they share with these communities in order to enhance their collection process, but also to complete returns to get ideas as to how they could work better. The uh, the, uh, the tax departments have great, great powers, and we all know that. Uh, and I think that with great powers come great responsibilities. I, I don't know if it was Voltaire or Spider-Man who said that, or some people might have said that. But the point is that we do have a lot of powers. And the point is, you know, once we get, once we start abusing them, then we're in trouble. And I think the, the entire issue and things that I keep on hearing from this conference, but you have to reach out. You really have to reach to the other side and embrace that that in the <coughs> controversy, let's get rid of controversy. And I think India mentioned about that today. The day that you have empathy and you reach out, you will be able to, to administer your tax system a heck of a lot better. Um, I I don't have an answer from the gentleman for the gentleman from Guatemala. And his lawyers. That, that's that's an age-old problem. So I don't know what to do with the lawyers. You know, they're going to be here forever, um, and they'll be the last freak to die, possibly. Uh, but <laughs> but the, I think I think uh, even even there, you can you can really reach the other side and really work with them and, and being able to implement changes in the tax administration. I think I'm going a little too uh, over over my um, my. Um, Expected 20 minutes, but uh, nevertheless, I uh, I want to thank everyone. I want to thank the CRA for an excellent conference. Uh, it's been a wonderful week. I, I think I've learned a lot. We've all learned a lot, uh, and I wish everybody a pleasant trip back home. Thank you.
de toda, todas nuestras conferencias y mucho más, eh, ha dedicado años de su vida al CIA. Eh, siempre nos pregunto la fuerza del CIA, yo siempre les digo que la fuerza del CIA viene de colaboradores como que tenemos de, de una vida, ¿no? y según de la Secretaría Ejecutiva, según de las administraciones tributarias y personas que estuvieron de los dos lados. Socorro actuó como corresponsal, yo creo que casi 18 años. Y llegó a la Secretaría en el año 2006. Y ahora decidió que para él es mejor dedicarse un poco más a bajar su handicap del golf. Eh, le gustaría estar con más tiempo para su vida personal y por tanto por su voluntad propia. Él está dejando la Secretaría en Panamá. Si bien va a seguir colaborando uh, en lo posible eventualmente con nosotros y con otras organizaciones, eh, especialmente con la NQO, que como hace pocos minutos estábamos discutiendo, pero al nos dejar, yo quisiera traducir un agradecimiento eterno profundo de todos los servidores de la Secretaría y de todos los países miembros por su dedicación. Ha sido un compañero para todos los temas, todos los días, y no hay cómo eh, traducir eso de forma material, por supuesto, porque es un agradecimiento que hacemos de corazón. Pero quisiera eh, ofrecerte en nombre de, no solo de estos participantes, pero de todos con los que tú has convivido en el CIA, eh, vamos a buscar un guerrero para que tú puedas tener contigo. Ese es un guerrero pre-contigo. Espero que tú lo recibas. Una persona que me ha sentido mucho, que es muy mal. No he expresado a mí que va a ser mucha falta, pero vamos a estar felices que tú vas a estar uh, con nosotros siempre de lejos, apoyando el CIA y nos orientando también al buen camino. Muchas gracias. Representatives of the International Monetary Fund, 
the Intra-European Organization for Tax Administration and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development uh, step forward and uh, prepare to sign the MOU. Maybe we can do the same. Just one copy, say fine, but later we can do Take your time. As you all know, this is very important for all organizations, including this one, as well. Thanks for having me. Administration Forum, ATAP, 
the Association of Tax Authorities of Islamic Countries, ACAIC, the Commonwealth Association of Tax Administrators, CATA, the Inter-American Center of Tax Administrations, CIAT, the Caribbean Organization of Tax Administrators, COTA, the Center for Exchange and Studies of Tax Administration Leaders, Prena, the Inter-European Organization of Tax Administration, IOTA, the Pacific Islands Tax Administrators Association, PIPA, and the West African Tax Administration Forum, Lata. The countries that are here today and represented in the room, sorry, the organizations that are here today and represented in the room, their, represent, their representatives will come forward to sign the Memorandum of Understanding, the, the agreement, as will Sarah Adenberger, representative of the International Tax Compact. Please. Here's one. Yeah, it's just that sign just one in right now. There are eight and sign the other ones over there. <laughs> Estás grabando todo. Mientras los secretarios hacen la firma, quisiera decir una palabra de un minuto, básicamente. Eh, Decía que buscábamos y hemos encontrado una foto de 1988 en Manila, en Pinas, una reunión de las organizaciones tributarias. Decía a la época del CATA, del CATA, de Edad y hay, y hay otra. En la oportunidad, ATAF todavía no estaba constituido. Y Wata. Y, así que eso representa un sueño de 30 años, porque la reunión realizada en Filipinas fue una reunión para ver cómo consolidar un esfuerzo de colaboración que siempre existió, siempre va a existir, pero era de forma desestructurada. Ahora tenemos una misión, una visión, un plan estratégico, un plan operativo, y estoy seguro que ese es un acto histórico para todas esas organizaciones, porque nos va a permitir consolidar nuestros esfuerzos, disminuir los costos de nuestras organizaciones y aumentar el servicio que realizamos a nuestros países. Uh, hemos, tenemos un comité, de gestión y se me permite yo les voy a anunciar que no era la intención ninguna pero los compañeros seleccionaron el CIA para ser el CIA de la, de la, del primer año así que yo me siento muy honrado de asumir en nombre de la Secretaría Ejecutiva del CIA esta posición y considero hoy un día histórico para nuestras organizaciones muchas gracias Next, we will formally sign the agreement for the organizing and hosting of the Lisbon Tax Summit on Digital Economy and Tax Lab to be held on October 24th through 26th, 2018, in Lisbon, Portugal. For this, we call upon the following signatories Elena Alves Borges, Director General of the Tax and Custom Authority of Portugal, 
host of the Lisbon Tax Summit on Digital Economy and Taxation. I also ask Miguel Silva Pinto, Intra European Organization of Tax Administration, to join, as well as Michael Snow, President of the CF Executive Council. Primero solo para comentar que esto es parte también de lo que estamos trabajando para hacer la NTO. Por la primera vez vamos a organizar un evento conjunto de los 30 años o más de colaboración de Ayota con el CIA. Entonces es un momento igual histórico que Portugal nos está permitiendo a la la conferencia de Portugal que se va a llamar Summit on Digital Economy es un evento que Portugal nos proporciona de realizar esa discusión de la economía digital y la tributación de forma conjunta CIA y Iota y yo entiendo que ese es el primero de otros que debemos pensar en organizar a nivel de la NPO así que pudiera Felicitar de forma muy especial a la doctora Elena Borges, que ha sido la impulsora de esta acción conjunta. Muchas gracias por su confianza en las dos organizaciones. Minhas palavras de agradecimento antes de mais ao Canadá pela forma como organizou este extraordinário evento, que é sempre extraordinário, mas em que é um momento em que todos nós vimos com vontade de partilhar e de receber conhecimento, experiência, fomentar as nossas fortalecer os laços e promover o networking. E é sempre este momento extraordinário que o país organizador proporciona e que a CIA se mantém uh, presente nas nossas agendas todos os anos. E isso tem uma importância enorme, porque, embora as assembleias, os, as conferências técnicas tenham sempre um público diferenciado, isso também tem aspectos transporta renovação, transformação, o que nós também procuramos em cada um destes momentos, observamos o panorama mundial, percebemos o que acontece à nossa volta e orienta-nos nas nossas escolhas humanas. Portanto, eu tenho desta, desta vivência e destas participações na, na, na evento, na Universidade de CIEF, enfim, momentos de inspiração para a minha organização em Portugal 
isso é um dos motivos que me traz cá. E é também o motivo pelo qual me pareceu que era nossa obrigação retribuir ao CIA, retribuir aos países que no momento acolheram as estas iniciativas anuais, essa possibilidade de viverem uma experiência destas novamente em Portugal. Não é a primeira vez e por isso sei que não preciso fazer um convite com muita veemência, porque tenho por certo que nas últimas experiências de iniciativas deste tipo que se realizaram em Portugal foram do agrado de muitos dos presentes. Para aqueles que ainda não estiveram em Portugal e na cidade de Lisboa, esta será certamente uma grande oportunidade, porque nós estaremos uh, a trabalhar para nos proporcionar uma experiência enriquecedora, intelectualmente desafiante, com o ambiente de transformação digital e de inovação tecnológica. Também é característico da cidade de Lisboa, que tendo esta orientação para o futuro, tem também uma história importante e uma tradição nós gostamos de mostrar e de partilhar com as pessoas que nos visitam. E, portanto, aquilo que eu vim aqui fazer foi lembrar a todos que a data de 24 a 26 de outubro de 2018 deve já ficar inscrita na nossa agenda. Contamos com todos e que, enfim, deixamos aqui um pequeno vídeo com as imagens que são curtas de produção. Não queremos mostrar-vos muito porque queremos que lá vão para viver. Porque isso é mesmo o que conta é a razão para que estejam connosco, que se sintam em casa e que sintam vontade de voltar, que sintam que o tempo que estiverem em Lisboa e em Portugal foi pouco para o mundo que há lá para fazer e para viver. E portanto é esse o convite que eu gosto de todos, espero que estes momentos sejam um primeiro sinal de que enfim, em Portugal encontrarão também inspiração para as administrações e temos a obrigação de Muito obrigada a todos. Now to discuss the CIA 2019 General Assembly, I invite Mrs. Yanile Perez, Chief of the National Tax Office of Cuba. Thank you. 
Dominicana de Administración Tributaria de Justicia y especial a nuestro querido Ignacio, que da este privilegio y el placer de hacer realidad este sueño. Celebrar en Cuba la 53 Asamblea General del próximo año 2019. Por tanto, con motivo de, inter de intervención, es invitarlos a todos, a los representantes de los países miembros, a los miembros asociados, a los organismos internacionales y expertos tributarios a participar en esta asamblea, la cual se celebrará en el Centro de Convenciones Plaza América Varadero Cuba, en el mes de mayo de 2019. El punto de partida en este evento es el tema del factor humano, el cerebro de la administración tributaria, su selección, gestión y capacitación. Tema además que es de particular importancia para nuestra administración tributaria cubana. Estamos preparados para recibirlos a todos con el calor inmenso, no solo del clima, sino de la hospitalidad de nuestro pueblo, e invitarlos a recorrer hermosos lugares con vegetación exuberante y maravillosas playas. Les aseguro que van a visitar un país cargado de historia y alegría y celebrar una asamblea exitosa. Nos proporcionará un gran placer el poder contar con la presencia de todos ustedes. Cuba los espera. Muchas gracias. siempre una oportunidad del cierre de nuestros, nuestras asambleas, en especial también las conferencias, de rendir homenaje a las personas que se dedican a nuestra administración. Aprovechamos siempre a veces cuando estamos en un país a dedicar a personas que han participado de momentos decisivos de nuestra Secretaría. Y en esta oportunidad es, quería invitar con mucho orgullo y satisfacción Señor William Bill Baker, que pudiera subir a Today's este, con nosotros para recibir nuestro histórico agradecimiento por todo su apoyo que ha dado en su posición de former president of the executive council of CIPA. Thank you, sir. Bill Baker, this is for you from our heart. Thank you very much for having me here. I would like to read. The Inter-American Center of Tax Administration, CIA, grants this recognition to William Bill Baker for his valuable and permanent support to the institutional and technical activities of CIA during his term as Counselor of CIA Executive Council and President of our Center, Ottawa, Canada, May 17, 2018. <laughs> Thank you. 
repository part number my association with Seattle University. And uh, actually, my first international trip to terms of revenue agency that I called the Revenue Canada was to visit Panama in 89 to work on strategic plans. Not quite as far back as Socorro, but very close. And uh, I had the distinction of uh, attending, I think, about 12 or 13 uh, general assemblies and uh, technical sessions. Uh, every one of them I had to speak at, so I never really had a chance to relax. But uh, I do I do now, and uh, I just want to say how, uh, how special, and I think uh, anyone who uh, knew me in the time in Seattle knows how the high regard I held for Seattle. I was saying to somebody just before the break that uh, I was regarded as an organization that was very sincere and genuine in its efforts to improve tax administration across the, across the globe. See all the flags of our, of our other nations and sister nations across the uh, region and the world, and uh, also I'm delighted to see how well Seattle Institution has prospered in the last number of years. So thank you very, very much. It's uh, it's truly a pleasure for me to be here today and receive this uh, privilege. Es momento que fue difícil pensar cómo hacer un homenaje a una persona que nos ha conquistado a todos, una persona que hoy es casi como una amiga, además de ser una jefa, una directora, pero es una amiga del corazón. Y no sabíamos hasta pensar cómo, cómo podemos rendir homenaje a esta señora que para nosotros es como una flor de, que nos inspira belleza y nos hace mover todos los días en busca de un trabajo mejor. Yo soy testigo porque nunca Gracias. había tenido Gracias. la oportunidad de conocer a viceministra Marta González de Ayala y cuando tomó posesión no nos conocíamos. ¿no? Sí, yo le digo. Y yo soy yo testigo de un trabajo maravilloso que lo hace frente a Paraguay y pero concluyó su misión ahora como presidenta de nuestra organización, como querida Marta, de parte de la Secretaría de los miembros del Consejo Directivo, quisiera que recibieras nuestro obsequio. Representa poco, pero todo nuestro cariño y admiración por esta persona. Es una flor, una orquídea de Panamá. Y simbólicamente porque agradecer a Canadá como un país miembro es eh, otra tarea impensable. Lo mencioné en la apertura, Canadá desde el 69 que entró, es un país que ocupa un liderazgo en los trabajos de la organización. Uh, en esta oportunidad queríamos registrar un elevado de conocimiento al apoyo que nos da Canadá todos los días, a, a todo el equipo de la Canadian Revenue Agency, la persona de nuestro comisionado o asistente, señor Michael Snow, una, una placa de agradecimiento por la realización de esta Asamblea General. Buenos días, Michael. Para hacer más dos agradecimientos. Uno es pedir primero un fuerte aplauso a nuestros intérpretes que de con nosotros.
con eso, yo espero verles a todos en Lisboa, en la conferencia Iota Cia, en Portugal, y paso la palabra para la conclusión a nuestro presidente, comisionado asistente. Thank you, Marcio. Uh, I must uh, confess that uh, I'm actually a little sad to reach the end of uh, our conference. I know that all of the uh, people worked so hard to make it a success. I'm very grateful that we probably reached uh, the end of a very extensive period of work. Um, it's lasted a long time, but it uh, paid off. And so I also would like to thank not only the interpreters who have been here today and across the sessions and all the hotel staff and everyone else with a dedicated team that's been working on this for years uh, to put this together, both in the secretary, Francisco, as well as everybody, uh, as well as in CRA, Renee, JTA, the predecessors, because that's gone on for a while. Thank you so much. And, uh, Bill, uh, again, thank you for being the continuity for Canada and Seattle. I mean, that we get a little, we get younger than we retire. I'm looking forward to that. Um, so first of all, uh, it, it doesn't go as, I'd like to thank all of the participants. You're the ones who've made this conference special, certainly special for me. As always, your experience and knowledge, the insights you bring, the experiences you bring, uh, are what make it a special occasion. Every conference is special and every conference as to our knowledge, what we can do as tax administrations. Um, but again, this time we've learned uh, things that uh, have shown how we're moving ahead uh, individually and collectively. Um, Socorro gave a very detailed and comprehensive debrief in the last two days, so I won't go uh, over that, but I would like just to say we've seen so many innovative approaches to engaging and building trust citizens and businesses. And we've also heard about the complexities of relationships that we manage as the tax administration goes beyond tax to helping the whole of their government. We've heard about how tax administrations manage some of the most intricate and complex relationships within their countries. Uh, Jeff in his uh, presentation signaled a very unique model that I'm still trying to think about. Many of you have talked about similar uh, situations. But also the international collaboration has featured very strongly, especially today. And the complexity continues to evolve, but also the simplicity is not just a part of my strategy that gets to see the tax file, which is in the end what we want to get down to, working together on the actual specific tax matters. I think our stakeholders in our countries would have been proud to see us talk in this space the last few days, and they would have been pleased to hear the tone and the respect that we have for them as we work together to make things uh, function more smoothly. I think they might have been surprised and pleased at the human touch of many of our presentations, like Jamaica and Norway. So many others where a sense of humor and comfort and uh, pull out what can be to others a dry topic, but a topic we love, which is tax, a topic we live for. Um, as we heard, world class means a commitment to learning and growing. And I've got to say, if that's the case, this is a world class group. Way to go. I'm very proud to be a part of your, your group and uh, very much treasure this conference time that we've had together. We we're very proud to host at this particular conference. So, with that, um, I now declare the 52nd General Assembly at CF closed. Safe travels, everyone. Uh, have a wonderful time, and we'll see you in Lisbon. C'est fini. C'est fini. fini. On gage en... C'est tout bien.